for, we're just gonna need recording in progress. We're just gonna use some of these clips um, to, to share with Helena and her team a little bit. And I'm just gonna put this, this form. So um, we're really, we're celebrating um, ourselves in a way and all the, the good things that are happening in this area, all the good things that are happening in terms of relocalizing our food system, creating more local livelihoods that are meaningful and green and really benefiting the community. And uh, also, also really appreciating our, our local culture and our, our, our local uh, makers and musicians and artists. And what we hope will come out of this little event is that we get a little bit more connected and we can support more of the local and just get a little bit deeper, broader, try to bring our friends into this. And one of the ways that we can do that, oh, someone's at the door. <laughs> that I wonder, um, another, another guest. But one of the ways we can do that is by sharing information. So I'm putting into the chat right now, and I'll try to share this a few more times, a link to a little form that you can fill out and um, you know, fill it out with information about your project or about a local uh, restaurant or farm that, that you are uh, enamored with. And we're gonna create a little directory and we're gonna share that uh, with everyone after the fact. So uh, Arthur, okay, bye. If for those of you who are leaving, bye. And our good old friend, Jonathan Dawson. Hey, Jonathan. <laughs> hey, Jay. How are you? Very good, a bit frazzled. Traffic is stationary in town. Uh, okay. So um, we are gonna, so we're gonna hear from Jonathan in a minute. Um, Jonathan is from, uh, just, just relax, take a breath, get a glass of wine or beer or something, um, or kombucha. Beer, please. Beer. beer. Great. Okay. So, so we're serving a Barnaby's brew house, local sustainable lager, which I think is the best in the UK. It's made just up the road. They're co-located with the Darlington Dairy. They're trying to practice um, industrial um, symbiosis. So really trying to make their process circular. The beer is fantastic. And um, that's what you're going to have. So um, this is Jonathan Dawson. He's from Schumacher College and he is the program lead for the Regenerative Economics Program. And uh, Caroline Aitken, I'm going to pin your video. And let's see if I can make multiple pins. Um, Caroline Aitken is the designer and the de facto lead for the Regenerative Food and Farming Program, a new BSC, a BSC. This is the Barnaby's, by the way, good stuff. Today's show brought to you by Barnaby's. Um, but um, this, this new regenerative food and farming bachelor's program is so exciting, so exciting for many reasons. Um, but before I bubble over with all of my enthusiasm, Caroline, can I um, ask you to take the stage for a minute and say a little bit about yourself and the program? Absolutely. Um, any excuse to talk about it. Um, I've got a little presentation. I don't know whether um, I can screen share or if that's too complicated. Well, let me see if I can. Uh, uh, you should be able to now. Do you see? Okay. Yeah. Let's give this a go. Right. Can you see that? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm not going to faff around with getting it into um, slideshow you because my I know I've had trouble with that in the past so I will just crack on so um yes so my so I'm Caroline Itkin um, and I'm a permaculture teacher and I do um I also do permaculture land design so I help people to design whole farm systems and so in my work and in my background I used to be a farmer myself um I you know I've been I'm really sort of plugged into this incredible um, movement in regenerative agriculture that's going on um, in the UK at the moment and all over the world as well. Um, and particularly in the Southwest, we've got this really, really strong um, sort of culture 
and uh, the growth of this movement over the last, um, so particularly the last 10 years has been incredible. And so you've got organizations like the Land Workers Alliance, um, the, um, who are part of the Global Levia Campesina Network, which is uh, supporting um, small farmers who are, uh, who are feeding their local communities, essentially. And then things like the Oxford Real Farming Conference, which happens each year, where people get together from all over the country to talk about these generally fairly sort of small to medium scale agroecological um, food production businesses, which are uh, supporting their local communities and their local economies and really bringing in sort of food sovereignty and, and regional food security and, and all of that stuff. And it's all really positive. And I think, you know, in these in these challenging times, um, this, these kinds of agroecological farming businesses are, are a kind of rare given story because they've got so much potential to um, for, for positive change, both environmental and social positive change. So I started teaching at Schumacher a few years ago on their practical um, residency in sustainable horticulture. And, um, and then I was asked to do a little bit of research for the college to look into, so we'd have this kind of um, uh, a, a little bit of a breakthrough really for agroecology because we started to have advocacy from people like the FAO, so the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization and the International Panel for Climate Change um, in around 2018. And, and there was the Sustainable Development Goals, um, which really, um, really advocated agroecology as, as a really positive solution. Um, and so I was asked by the head of college at the time to have a look into um, what they as an educa educational institution could do to aid the transition to agroecology. Um, and that was that was great. I went off and I spoke to all sorts of people within the sector, um, from farmers to policymakers and um, food entrepreneurs and and um, students and everybody in between. Um, and um, and also spoke to a lot of people on the Dartington Estate um, because the Dartington Estate has become a little bit of um, a hotbed for um, this really kind of innovative land use and food production. And um, so, um, so I realised that I've jumped ahead of my first slide a little bit here. So I'll talk a bit more about the research in a minute, and I'll just talk a bit more about the context at Dartington. So many of you I recognise and I know that you'll know about Dartington, um, but back in 2012, um, they, the estate did a whole review of the way in which it uses its land. Um, and since then, um, and they, they sort of renewed their goals for the estate and they, they decided that they they had um, they wanted all of the land use on the estate to be regenerative, but they wanted to support meaningful livelihoods on the estate, um, create supportive networks amongst the, the people living and working on the estate, get community engagement in the in the, the land activities, and really sort of foster collaboration wherever possible. And so the land use review um, led to a much more diverse um, land use on the estate. And so now there's these these different colour patches just represent lots of different types of land use, um, different kinds of production happening across the 1,200 acres, um, and lots of um, I mean it's really it's all about the people. All of the exciting stuff happening at Dartington is about these incredible people who've come and have innovated and are um, creating brilliant enterprises in in um, food and farming. So. There's um, Old Parsonage Farm and um, School Farm and Foxhall Community Garden and the Woodland Presents, Grow Cycle, Martin Crawford's um, Forest Garden, um, lots going on. And also in the way of food. So there's the Green Table Cafe and the White Heart and, um, and the Darkington Shops. And, oh, um, and then of course, you know, we're, we're right next door to Totnes, which is, um, has, is a transition town, the first transition town, um, and is really famous for its um, the, the diverse range of independent businesses on the high street and all of the incredible cafes that are there. And then we've got um, all sorts of other really exciting um, independent food businesses like the brewery that Jay mentioned and the Almond Thief um, Artisan Bakery. Um, apologies for the dog barking. <laughs> uh, there's nothing I can do about it. She's going to bark whatever I do, so she'll have to carry on. Um, I'm just going to close the door.
your neighbors complain about your dog, Caroline? Um, she only barks. She's she's a doorbell basically. She only barks when people arrive, and that's my that's my son getting home from school. <laughs> this okay. is just to prove that this is this is live and happening now. In case anyone doubted. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to be I'm going to keep it brief, Jay. I know I've got limited time. So the back to the research that I did for the college. Um, what I found when I looked into um, what was needed from educators to aid the transition to agroecology was that there are a huge amount of opportunities because we're in a situation where people are wanting to have a relationship with where their food has come from. You know, people love farmers markets. They're, they're getting, they're signing up for community supported agriculture. They're signing up for their veg boxes. And people are really enjoying um, that, that level of provenance of knowing where the food has come from and having a relationship with the people who produced it. Um, also, there are more and more young people wanting to get into this kind of agriculture um, because it, it gives them a meaningful livelihood and they feel as if they're supporting transition um, and it's fulfilling work. And the networks, as I say, that, you know, as a movement, it's really, it's really buzzing and it's really positive and exciting. So loads of opportunities for educators, actually, um, because um, what I did identify was when I when I started to look at what was available or, already in terms of education for people wanting to do agroecological production is that, that it was really, really limited, um, loads of gaps. So when speaking to people in the sector, I identified that actually that um, what they really need is good business skills to be up to date with regenerative methods. Um, to have a foundational understanding of scientific research and monitoring skills, uh, an understanding of food systems, the relationships between food and health, and a sort of holistic systems approach to food production. So, um, so essentially all of this led us to the development of what is going to be the first undergraduate program of its kind in the country. It's the only course that really sort of um, that, that is a parallel to the kind of agricultural um, degrees uh, that the traditional agricultural universities are uh, offering. So Harper Adams and, you know, um, uh, Reading and places like that. So, so this is the, the first degree that you can do if you want to be an agroecological farmer and to have the business skills, the scientific knowledge and everything that you need in order to do that. And we're really going to be tapping into all of these incredible um, networks of producers and food entrepreneurs, not just uh, here and within the region, but also further afield as well. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it really felt like this was the right place for a course like this to take off with the context that we have. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I think, I think I'll leave it there. I think I've talked enough. Thanks, Jay. Great. Thanks, Caroline. So, um, so uh, in essence, an innovative bachelor's program for young people to learn how to become part of the change, to learn how to become the kind of farmers and food producers that we need right now, that's awesome. <laughs> and so um, how, many, like, how many students can be, uh, can be in this program? Well, we have a, we have a sort of um, target number of 25. Um, <clears throat> so Schumacher's seen it's a <coughs> small college. So um, we tend to have smallish groups and, and that creates a really nice learning environment. <clears throat> and how many programs like this are there in Britain? Um, so there are, there are no other programs quite like this. Wait a minute, so, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> You're saying this is the only one this is the first of its kind. It is the first of its That's kind. That's amazing. I know. Stop the press. It is the first degree of, of its kind in the country, <laughs> which in which in which is really exciting. Um, uh, also, a little bit alarming, right? That we've had the kind of advocacy that we've had from these big international NGOs uh, for agroecology, and yet you know this is, we haven't had the like, really serious professional training that's needed for that so far. Well, you know, the best time to change the world was 20 years ago. Exactly. But we're doing it now, so it's all okay. <laughs> so um, let's see. I'm just going to put the link in the chat. So here's, here's what people can do. Well, what can people do? I'll give you the first shot. What can people do? 
So um, you can spread the word um, and you can uh, check out the website. And we've been doing lots of events. So we've been having some fun events um, where we've been interviewing food and farming authors. So I've been reading a book a month and then interviewing the author at the end of the month. So come and join some of those events. Um, we have an open day on the 22nd of June, all being well. Um, and so, yeah, come, out, come and have a look at the college and, uh, and learn more about the program and everything else that's on offer. And uh, I suppose just, I, I mean, no disrespect, because I might be the oldest person on this call. I mean, no disrespect, no, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. But um, uh, probably this is something to share with your kids your friends, kids, and maybe your grandkids, and, you know, as the case may be, uh, because I guess people, young people will be choosing their, their uh, university soon, right? Yeah, so, um, so uh, some of them may well have done that already. And um, so we are in UCAS, but we've, um, uh, we've just got to the point where we could, we could put the program in there because we've just finished kind of putting it all together. Um, so there will be um, the UCAS clearing process, but you can apply directly to the college as well. So, so we're looking. We, we're obviously we're wanting to to um, get this message out to school leavers, but also we we did find when we were doing the research for the course that um, a lot of people drawn to these kinds of careers and livelihoods at the moment um, are what we call career changes. So they're people who who basically have sort of you know given up their day job and or. or you know, and decided that they want a change of lifestyle and, and a meaningful livelihood. So that's interesting. Okay. So just share it far and wide. Excellent. So food, so important. It's the foundation of, uh, of everything. It's the foundation of our, of our economics. And so really what that means is our, the soil really is, is, is not just metaphorically, but actually is the ground of our being. And uh, so important. And in order for us to really make the shift and, and to, to create the kind of systems that we need that, that really recognize that fact, we need to understand how to do it. And so this program is really amazing, but there's also another program at Schumacher that's um, working along the same lines. It's the Regenerative Economics Program. And we're really lucky to have Jonathan here, who's the, the program lead. And Jonathan, maybe you can uh, say a few words about the program or about anything you like, really. Okay. Great. So, um, yeah, we run a program, a, a, a postgrad program called Regenerative Economics, uh, previously known as Economics for Transition. Um, and I think, like Caroline, Caroline's really interesting for her to say that really this is a pretty unique offer. Because I think the, the regenerative economics program as well is, it's kind of very distinctive. Um, in fact, in ways I think it is probably unique. I can't really think of another program like it in the world. So like to start off with, it begins, like I think it's probably one of the very few programs that begins with ecology, natural system design. So like very consciously asking the question, how can we ecologize economy rather than economizing ecology as tends to be the case. Uh, we're not unique in that, and there are a number of really good um, ecological economics courses in Britain and elsewhere, so we're certainly not unique in that. I think where we're more distinctive is, like in two places particularly, one is the renowned pedagogy that really goes through all of the college's programs of what we call head, heart and hands. So the idea that we do want to, we want to develop critical thinking, um, you know, it's a really, it's a very... Uh, rigorous in terms of academic rigor, it's a very rigorous program. Um, and we recognize that the intellect is not the only learning faculty. And again, this is very much swimming against the tide. So recognizing, I mean, certainly as an educator, I notice that when we can bring in the emotions and bring the body into the learning experience, inviting the students to bring their whole person into the learning space, that it's a qualitatively different experience that really the students have access to a much deeper range of experience and transformation behavior change because they're not just thinking about issues with their heads, they're also deeply exploring it at other levels. Um, and I think is similarly something that really kind of is a linked thing is the very fact that it's a community-based, like an ashram-based experience. 
so students and staff alike are involved in growing vegetables and cooking the food, cleaning, you know, looking after the maintenance of the buildings. It means that rather than it being some sort of abstract consideration of something out there, it's an opportunity for the students at all levels to, to engage themselves in, in giving them the opportunity for an embedded experience, an embodied experience of sustainability, not as an abstract concept, but as a working practice in their own lives. And um, so maybe on a, on a personal level, my, my own first grown up job was working with the, an affiliate of the organization that Fritz Schumacher created, the Intermediate Technology Development Group in Africa. And I think really from my own roots in rural Ireland and from my really influential time spending about a decade in West Africa, like really recognizing the importance of human scale, scale being a critical factor and noticing that in many ways, I mean, both in Ireland and in West Africa, both relatively poor parts of the world, the people that, that the, the people were enabled to participate in a way that consumer society really makes it very difficult to do. And so I think that this, um, like something I, I, I think I love about living in this part of the world, in particularly in Totnes and Darlington, is the multiple opportunities for people to actually become participants rather than spectators, consuming spectators in their life experience. So I have to say for me, um, you know, working at the college is a total joy. I've been here for a decade. And um, I, so I was part of the team that helped create the, the, create the program in the first place. And it's just a joy to be able to work in a place where the, the borders and membranes between the, 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 the classroom and the learning space outside the classroom are really, is, really, is really thin. Um, so students have a real opportunity for a real holistic embodied experience so it's a real joy to work there and it's a real joy to have you join me this year I, as part well of the team. um i didn't mention that yet i didn't mention that yet but yes it's um it's to, it's a total dream dream job <laughs> i've already had a glass of wine or two everyone it's a dinner party so maybe jay i can just uh attempt to embarrass you a little bit that actually okay. what jay has brought into the team is a phenomenal range of contacts in South Devon and beyond. Um, so we're really getting deeply tied into, uh, you know, what does economic, what does human scale economic transformation look like, not just in paper, not just with international case studies, but here in our own backyard. And I think I really celebrate, you know, this, in this huge gift of your own knowledge and networks that you've brought to the program. It really, it really deeply enriches us. Thanks. Well, um... This is the work, this is the work. <laughs> and, and we're so lucky that in this area, it's like a living laboratory. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, I was having a chat with Susan Witt, who's involved with, in fact, I think she's the co-founder of the Schumacher Institute. She is. And the Schumacher Institute. Black Dog Cafe. Uh, black, that's black. Judy Wicks. That's Judy Wicks. Yeah. Ah. So Susan Witt is, um, she and her, her husband set up the, the Schumacher Institute. I think they were friends of Schumacher. So for those of you who might not know, E.F. Schumacher uh, wrote Small is Beautiful. Look it up. It's um, something you should read. But but she was saying, you know, the thing that's so nice about the Totnes area, and it's not just Totnes. I know Schumacher's in Darnington, but the thing that's so nice about this area is that when you look around at all the things that are being advocated around local economics or economic relocalization or um, really just about any kind of alternative to capitalism, because almost every, every alternative to capitalism will, will kind of build from the ground up the kind of economics that, that is you know, sort of convivial and uh, is oriented toward well-being and so on. She says, in almost every kind of example, you have it there in Tontes or you know, in, the, in the area. They may not all be exemplars, but but there are, all, there are so many examples of things that are happening here. I think as well, we're, we're pretty close to Bristol. And um, it's something that we have done in the past is take our students on a, um, towards the end of the top, pro, the top period of the program is to take them on a trip to Bristol to look at the social economy in Bristol. And time and again, you see the students, it's almost lighting up with, oh my goodness, this is not just theory, this is for real. Um, I think Bristol doing it on a slightly bigger scale than here, but just so like a combination of 
of like American can do with European social democracy, very In much Bristol. cooperative. Bristol is phenomenal. Can do, the American can do. I, I, that's my experience. Wow, but, nice. but, but rather than for private um, profits, it being for community benefit. Great. So just one more thing and then we're gonna move on. And that is um, uh, the, what the alumni go on to do is amazing. And one of the alumni is working with the Donut Economics Action Lab. Two, Two of them. Maybe three, who knows? Because I know they're, they're advertising for a job. <laughs> and we have applicants for that job as well. But uh, yeah, so they go on to do really interesting things. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it, it's interesting. The, 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 the students, when they finish the program, often uh, there is a second year. It's almost like it's a two-year program. The first year is here and you pay for it. The second year is going back out into the world and going, wow, how can I make this inspiration and these gifts? and seeing the world through different eyes stick with the right livelihood. Um, and really the, um, I mean, I think rather than run through them, I would just suggest that folk look at our website and there's a, there's a tab called Alumni Stories. Um, they include a guy who's created Israel's first um, ethical investment fund. Um, oh, actually two, uh, two minutes to mention, I don't want to exclude some by, by, by mentioning, others by mentioning some. But there's a, there's a long list of personal profiles of students who've gone on to do really pivotal, significant work. Great. I just put the link in the, in the chat and uh, you're gonna stick around. I am. Uh, you could get some dinner now. I, that's what I'm sticking um, around for. But you'll, you'll have a chance to, 